2020 was the year of the pandemic. And in many ways, this was a real crisis of governance. The extent to which countries were able to mitigate the crisis depended to a large extent on their policies and on the decisions of um, state institutions and of political leaders. The pandemic also highlighted for us that the usual differences that we think exist between developed established democracies of the North and the emerging democracies or authoritarian regimes of the rest of the world, um, that those distances may be quite small and that countries um, have, uh, when it comes to state citizen uh, relationships, countries across these different kinds of regimes have looked equally fragile over this um, last one year. Um, across the world, we have seen governments make um, decisions um, that left out, that were not inclusive, that left out citizen groups, and that were fairly centralized. I think that two trends that we might see quite a bit of is um, a, a renewed interest in how to include citizens in decision making processes. Inclusive governance has been a focus for us for a while, but the extent to which countries have not made use of it during a serious global crisis has really brought home the idea that our institutions need to be made more inclusive in the ways that they function. And hopefully we're going to have a lot more research and a lot more discussions on how to to strengthen democracy at the local level and to really strengthen local governments in their ability to be able to respond to a global crisis such as um, this and in terms of making sure that communities are more prepared and resilient in moving forward. But another trend um, that I think we'll hear about quite a bit is at the national level, which is of political polarization, which has really pulled populations apart at a time when they would have really needed to come together. And this is going to be an important trend that we are going to need to speak about. And I think we'll see a lot of continuing discussion around because it has very serious implications for the legitimacy of elected governments, um, for our ability for inclusive governance, our ability uh, for collective action, to see more collective action within communities. And it also may have very serious implications for measures uh, rehabilitation measures that governments would want to put through, and especially also in terms of people's compliance with rules and their acceptance of the vaccine. All of these things are affected by political polarization, and that I think is going to be a major discussion trend uh, moving into 2021.